The internet can be a dangerous place. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 creepiest catfish moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at the most unsettling moments from Catfish the TV show. Number 10. Danny and Rosa There were red flags in this online courtship from the get-go. Florida boy Danny had fallen in love with Rosa, a beautiful if troubled young woman. Unfortunately, Rosa was always coming up with bizarre excuses for why she couldn't meet in person, the worst being that she was arrested for beating up another girl. Neve and Max's arrival only served to make things worse. But even they couldn't predict what was about to happen. They took Danny to confront Rosa in person, but were shocked to discover that Rosa was actually a man by the name of Jose. This is just crazy, man. I, what are you doing, man? I mean, I didn't mean for this to happen like this. Aren't you ashamed of yourself, bro? I am ashamed of myself. In the words of Neve, it turns out Jose was putting on an impressively freaky fake voice the entire time. Can we hear the voice right now? I mean, I don't know what's going on. You know, a lot of things have been changing in my life. Wow. Number 9. Felicia and Jacqueline Felicia's life was upended when someone stole her name and photos and created a fake profile. And what Neve and Max found during their investigation was freaky with a capital F. It turns out that the person behind the mask was a girl by the name of Tracy. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> I don't like her. She stole all of Jacqueline Linkwood's friends. Not only was Tracy unaffected by the confrontation, but she openly boasted that she was proud of her actions. This internet Jekyll and Hyde was living as Tracy during the day and posing as Jacqueline by night. Like the whole Jacqueline Linkwood thing was like Miley Hannah, you know, Tracy by day. On the internet, I was Jacqueline by night. Is that Hannah Montana? Is that how it works? <laughs> yeah, that's how like I like did everything. When Max asks her if she ever worries about one of her online victims killing themselves, she flippantly responds by saying it would be their fault, not hers. And what if someone you cyberbullied killed themselves? Really? <laughs> yeah, really. I wouldn't cry. Like, would you want me to cry? It's not my fault they killed themselves. They made that choice themselves, so it's their fault, not mine. The worst catfish are the ones who have zero remorse for their actions. <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> Number 8. Lucille and Kid Cole The internet is littered with creeps like Kid Cole, aka Jerez Coleman, who are trying to make a quick buck any way they can. In Season 3 of Catfish, Coleman scams were brought to light with the help of Neve and Max. The con artist had been posing as a successful rapper in order to fleece unsuspecting victims of their hard-earned money. It's kind of tough. We wanted to find some of your music online, but we... we, we My were... SoundCloud? We went on your SoundCloud page, and we looked into some of the songs that you put up there, and you didn't make them. Well, Lucille had had enough and decided to fight back. Unfortunately for her, the confrontation with her aggressor didn't exactly go as planned and ended with Neve tossing Kid Cole's phone into a river. I like that case. Can I see that? <laughs> Seeing as how Coleman was later arrested for making terrorist threats, it would appear he failed to learn his lesson. I'm not trying to deceive people, scam people. That's not, that's not. But that's how they're gonna see it. I can understand doing it once, but like, why'd you do it like three oh, times? Time. Like the haters shut the hell up. Number seven, John and Kelsey. Prepare to have your rage meter turned up to 11, John contacted the Catfish team when he began to suspect that his internet crush Kelsey wasn't who she said she was. When the team finally tracked Kelsey down, they were outraged to discover that Kelsey was actually Adam, a serial catfisher who bragged about his numerous online trickeries. In fact, Adam claimed to have duped 30 to 40 people. I'm the Joker. I mean, this is the kind of loser that gives our show a bad name. I mean, do we really sitting here yeah. giving him any airtime? Yeah, I'm the king of catfishes, right? However, the creepiest moment comes when John asks Adam what his end game is, to which he replies, just to have fun with you. Yikes. So what's your end game here? Just to have fun with you, man. Number six, Artis and Jess. Everything about this catfish encounter was creepy as hell. Artis met Jess online and the two immediately hit it off, despite both being in relationships at the time. Artis was willing to leave the mother of his three children to be with Jess, but things uh, didn't exactly work out the way he had hoped. Neve and Max arranged for the two to meet, 
but artist was flabbergasted when a scruffy dude named Justin showed up instead. You're gay. Obviously, I'm not gay. Well, I'm it's not so obvious. I mean, you, you, you are pretending to be a girl online and, and having a romantic relationship with a guy, so. I give it to you. You got me there. Right. So, may, maybe. The encounter was something out of a David Lynch film, with Justin emerging from his car slow clapping and dripping in attitude. He immediately launches into an aggressive tirade that culminates with the now infamous, you could still be my chocolate kiss comment. Sweet dreams. You could still be my chocolate kiss too, you don't forget about that, baby. Number five, Mike and Caroline. When someone you meet online refuses to meet up in person and instead chooses to leave super creepy notes on your car, you know you have a problem. Caroline and I live in the same city, however, I have still yet to meet her. Right, time out. If you're talking to someone who lives in your city and they don't want to meet up with you, they're a catfish and you should run. Such was the case for Mike, who thought he'd met the love of his life in Caroline, only to discover that she was an entirely different person. The creepiness didn't stop with drive-by notes either. Mike claims that Caroline would take pictures of the outside of his work and send them to him, and that she told him she had colon cancer. In the end, Caroline turned out to be a woman by the name of Heather, who was not only cancer-free, but had actually catfished Mike before. I don't want to not have Michael in my life, no matter how I can have you. Other than being sick and being a teacher and what I look like in my name is real. If that were us, we'd be on the next bus out of town. Well, how would you continue to put yourself through this? It was being hopeful. It was believing you. Number four, Rod and Ebony. So Rod, has kind of been lying to Ebony. Right. But he's afraid that Ebony has been lying, lying to, him. to him for four I mean, years. Right. These two potential lovebirds met on an online dating site for gay men. Rod was looking for love, while Ebony, a transgender woman, was simply looking for a friend. The two wound up chatting and eventually professed their love for one another. However, trouble was brewing beneath the surface for the seemingly perfect online connection. I'm disappointed. I'm hurt, and I really feel like I don't know you. Who the f lies about a name for four years? Who lies about a picture? Who are you? Like, who are you? It turns out that Ebony was not transgender or transitioning at all, and was in fact a biological lesbian woman. Rod was shocked and ultimately confessed, saying he was just using Ebony because she was sending me money, and I don't really have feelings for her. Damn, that's harsh. The two have since mended their relationship, but at this point, they're just friends. I will see if I can forgive you. I don't know. I don't know. I forgive you. Number three, Blair and Marky. This relationship was steeped in drama from the get-go. Blair met Marky on Instagram and the two quickly hit it off. However, when Blair asked to meet up, Marky concocted an elaborate tale involving a kidnapping and a stint in the hospital. A week before they were going to meet in New York, after Blair bought a plane ticket for Marky, Marky gets kidnapped. And then a week later, she calls from a mental institution. Things got only stranger when Neve and Max were finally able to get the two women together for a sit-down. The mystery girl was surprisingly upbeat about the meeting, but still couldn't stop herself from spinning a web of lies when she was asked to explain herself. I was scared, you're right, but that doesn't mean I wasn't going to bail out on you. You kind of did, though, if you think about it. We don't know what the creepiest part about this episode was, Marky's lies or her overall aloofness to the entire situation. I don't really want you to leave. I don't want you to leave at all. Then be honest. Be honest with me. Number two, Kayla and Courtney. Although Courtney has been giving me messages from my dad, I haven't seen him since I was a kid. The reason being is that my dad passed away almost 14 years ago. If a stranger contacts you claiming to be a medium for your dead father's spirit, maybe call the cops and not the producers of our reality show. Kayla, whose dad killed her mother before committing suicide, went with the latter, with predictably creepy results. Unlike most episodes of Catfish, Courtney never pretends to be someone else. She simply claims to be acting on behalf of Kayla's deceased father. It's all incredibly spooky, with the eeriest moment occurring when the two finally meet in person. With Neve and Max looking on, the two women share an awkward embrace, with Courtney remarking that Kayla has her father's eyes. You have your dad's eyes. <laughs> 
<laughs> While the Catfish Boys appear skeptical, Kayla seems willing to accept Courtney's story, which just makes it creepier. It's really hard for me to, like, cope with all of this at once. I just don't really understand all of this pre-match, like, it's, it's crazy. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. And I know Carice, I went to school with Carice for four years, and you are nothing like who I was talking to one bit. But didn't you fall in love with McKenna, who happens to be me? It says, my new ring. From Ramon. That's pretty creepy. Did you send no, that? No, that wasn't me. Did you send that ring? No, I never sent her a ring. So you kind of created the profile as a trap, in a way, to meet girls? Yeah, to meet girls, to meet a lot of girls. Because I know Bow Wow, he gets that attention. Like, all the girls love him. But those are straight girls that like Bow Wow. Yeah, I mean, for me, I like a challenge. What's up? What's going on? Why the f would you do that? Because. Bring my you should have never called me a fat ass Kelly Price. I was very uncomfortable at first with the idea of, you know, putting all my pictures online. I didn't know what to think, what could result from it. I thought the picture looked similar enough to me that I could kind of get away with it. Number one, Tracy and Sammy. We're dealing with someone who is, you know, obsessed and and therefore maybe uh, perhaps dangerous. This catfish episode still sends shivers down our spines. Tracy, an actress living in Los Angeles, was contacted by Sammy, one of her fans. She told Tracy all about her friend Reese, who was dying from cancer. And I was like, something's not right. I don't know what it is. And then, dead Reese just favorited her own RIP tweet. She later claimed that Reese had passed away and even provided Tracy with footage of her funeral. Sammy turns out to be 100% real, which does little to calm our nerves. During their tense confrontation, Tracy asks Sammy about that creepy funeral footage, only to discover that it was from Sammy's cousin's funeral. Whose funeral was that? My cousin's. So your cousin died? Yeah. You went to your cousin's funeral and filmed it? What? Uh, yeah. It doesn't get much weirder than that. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.